Welcome to the Townsville Cancer Center's Townsville Tele-Oncology Network. In this video, we aim to show how selected low and intermediate risk chemotherapy agents and biological agents can be administered in rural towns using a telechemotherapy model. We use the Queensland Remote Chemotherapy Supervision Model that's outlined in this slide um, to deliver the chemotherapy. In this model, the rural generalist nurses, doctors and allied health professionals administer chemotherapy locally using telehealth under direct supervision by specialist doctors and specialist chemotherapy profession nurses from larger centers. We use the governance outlined by the Curex model, which is Queensland Remote Chemotherapy Supervision Model and Guide, as illustrated in this slide. This model was developed by staff from Townsville Cancer Centre, Central Integrated Regional Cancer Services, statewide clinical cancer and rural networks, with input from clinicians around the state of Queensland, on behalf of Queensland Health. So the development of this model was guided by literature on safety of uh, remote chemotherapy supervision, cost analysis, patient and health professional satisfaction, and other outcome measures on teleoncology models of care. This model has also been endorsed by the Clinical Oncology Society of Australia for national and international use. Hello, I'm Eva Ainon. I'm the Clinical Nurse Consultant at uh, the Townsville Cancer Centre. Before we embark on the telehealth model, we need to follow the following steps to ensure smooth implementation. Firstly, engagement of doctors, nurses, pharmacists and managers need to occur between the remote site and the providing site. Secondly, a site visit to assess feasibility and to recommend processes and equipment needs to occur. A three-day clinical placement and completion of ADAC modules by the nurses needs to occur and they come back every year for a refreshment. Commencement of the model can occur once the processes are in place by both recipient and provider site. Generally, we adopt a staged approach for the rollout of the medications. Vesicans are usually avoided. Successful implementation and operation of the model requires that both sides have good, clear communication. Hello, my name is Tracy Mosca, and um, I've been diagnosed with cancer for uh, been nearly six years this year. Yeah. Initially, like um, when I first started treatment, I started treatment in October 2011, and um, I was having it every three weeks in Townsville, um, and it was a really heavy stuff then. So I just sometimes stayed at a friend's place in Townsville because I'd be pretty drained from the chemo. Um, and then it was about the following year, around August, the following year, when Saibay and Joshi was saying, talking about having it in Ingham, which is yes, good, this is going to be great. Because not only like the travel of that, but it's also like when you have chemo, you feel like crap. So you want to be home and, you know, that, that an hour and a half traveling. But yeah, just the, the physical side of it and yeah, financially and all that sort of stuff is just a bit. Oh, but like, the yeah. girls have been so great. And um, like Eve David said, nine of is pretty much some treatment. And, and um, yeah, the, the relationship with them all have just been great. They're just an awesome bunch. But, you know, like I say to the girls, as much as I love you, <laughs> I want to be home and have a because I'll be only five minutes up the road from here. So, But, you know, the, the, the um, encouragement from the girls is great, you know, and do, like I said, come here and have your treatment and still have your communication with the guys. It's, it's, it makes a hell of a lot. I need to, I can always call them. I mean, sometimes, like, I have to still go to Townsville because we've only got the one girl that's really doing it at the moment. So, like, last round, I had to go to Townsville. Um, wasn't so bad, but driving is just not easily really exciting driver. And he's like, and my husband, like sometimes he has to actually like 
the, he has had time off work to take it. So that's another bit of a thing that helps that you still have to take off time. <laughs> but it's good though, because I mean, like, you know, I get other, um, there's other patients here, so you, you know, you, you're not on your own too, so you've always got something to talk. So the day of treatment starts off with the patient having a set of observations done by the nurse and she also does an assessment to see if there's any um, side effects from the chemotherapy. So the doctor does her clinical review, she talks to the patients about symptom management and any side effects, she looks at the blood results and any other results from any tests that might have been done um, and she decides from that whether the treatment goes ahead. So the next step in the process is to check the medication calculations to see that the drug is written correctly and it's the right dose by, by the protocol. Um, and then the two nurses, including the supervision nurse and the nurse that is competent at the provider side, checks the drugs to see that it's the right dose, the right drug, that it's not expired and it's for the right person. In the telehealth sites, the nurses have been shown how to make up monoclonal antibodies using full PPE and a closed system called Farsi. So the next part of the process is I watch the, the nurse at the site doing the administration, which includes the spiking of the bag, using the correct processes and wearing the correct PPE, um, hanging the bag, and setting the rate and checking that we've got blood return.